What's up my friends, welcome back. You're watching half video audio stuff and in this video I'm checking out this, the Deity Pocket Wireless System. I wanna find out what it sounds like, what sort of build quality, user experience and value you get and most importantly, whether it's any good. Let's do it. Just one quick bit of housekeeping before we dive in. These videos are powered by my Patreon backers. It's a non-profit thing, the idea being that with the funds from Patreon, I buy gear and then give it away to you guys once I've finished reviewing it. And speaking of winning, Deity have really kindly donated this D4 Mini to give away to my Patreon backers. So if you would like to support the channel and have the chance of winning this, you can find all the information in the description box below. You can find my Patreon link there. Many thanks. Let's get on with it. So what is the Deity Pocket Wireless system? The Deity Pocket Wireless is, and let's not beat around the bush about this, designed to compete with the Rode Wireless Go and actually go beyond in terms of what it offers and the value for money. So of course, I can't resist seeing how they compare throughout this video. Let's run through the features now. So the Pocket Wireless system is a single channel wireless microphone that you can plug straight into your camera and get really high quality audio. The Pocket Wireless has some awesome features for the price. In the kit, you get microphone and receiver units that pair almost instantly. Like the Rode Wireless Go, the mic has a built-in mic, but unlike the Rode, you get a high quality lav mic in the kit, which is pretty huge. The built-in mic in the transmitter unit has a frequency response of 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. If you're not really into audio, what that means is 20 hertz is super, super low bass sub, basically, which is, which is actually gonna be inaudible for some people. And at the other end, at 20 kilohertz, that's so trebly that again, it will be inaudible for some people. So it's the middle bit that's the important bit. The lav mic response starts at 50 hertz, which is still really low, but probably more appropriate for voice, which is probably what's gonna be used for mostly. And again, it goes all the way up to 20 kilohertz. I really like that the 3.5 millimeter jack on the lav when you plug it in, you can actually screw it in and it will lock into place so you can't accidentally pull it out. That's a really nice feature. I also love that on both units you have physical on off switch and that's just a really nice touch. It's really nice and kind of tactile and I like that. Deity say it has a range of 175 feet depending on conditions. The most important being line of sight, of course. 175 feet is the same as 53 meters and my question is how often do you need to film 53 meters away? I'm interested. A really nice feature that Deity have included is their guard rail analog limiter, which in theory should help to protect your audio from things that are too loud. You know, you shouldn't get clipping and that kind of thing. It's actually the same system that's used in their way more expensive Deity Connect series. So it's a really pro feature. The internal battery lasts for around five hours, which is pretty good and they're chargeable via USB. In terms of connectivity, you can connect it to the Deity Connect system, as I mentioned, plus things like phones, tablets, and laptops. So how's the build quality? Well, basically, it's an all plastic construction, which I try and give companies a hard time for, but I get that it makes the most sense from a cost, weight, and design perspective. At least this is something that should last the user quite a while. Size-wise, the units are slightly slimmer but longer than the Rode, but are really lightweight at just over 30 grams each. One really nice surprise is the quality of the display. It's a one inch screen and is really bright and sharp looking. I actually preferred it to the Rode's display, which I also liked. All of the kit you can see here comes in a pretty high quality case, which I like. It's way more bulky than the pouch you get with the Rode, so it's good if you're traveling, it'll offer protection, not so good if space is an issue. So what about the user experience and sound quality? Okay, so this is an area that really surprised me. I expected it to sound pretty good, but not as good as it actually does. Let me show you. So now using the Deity Pocket Wireless, and you can see the transmitter unit I've got just tucked under my collar here. It could be easily concealed like that. And I just wanted to see what it sounded like. I'm gonna move it next to my pocket and we'll see how that sounds. There we go. And although it's a little bit more visible than it was before, I tend to prefer the sound you get from this kind of position, just because I find up here, it sounds a little bit throaty. You know what I mean? Finally, I've just popped it here really kind of center of my chest. This is another really common position that you might have it. And um, obviously 
you know, it might look a little bit better with my shirt done up, but you get the idea. What do you reckon? Does it sound better, worse? So now I'm using the lav that comes with this kit and you can see I've got it clipped here. It's actually clipped to my t-shirt, but you know, usually I would prefer if I wanted it hidden to have it actually taped to my chest. And now you can see I've got it clipped to near the top button of my shirt. And uh, what do you think? In theory, this should sound less kind of muffled, um, but it's still pretty discreet. You can still sort of hide it. And particularly if you've got darker clothing, it will blend quite nicely. And uh, yeah, I'm intrigued to see which sounds better. And once again, I'm trying it center chest, clip to my shirt just to see what it sounds like. And um, yeah, what do you think? Better, worse? Regular viewers will know that I'm definitely an advocate for adding EQ and compression to all audio. I just think that everything can be improved with these two simple techniques. Let me show you a before and after. And once again, I'm trying it center chest, clip to my shirt just to see what it sounds like. And um, yeah, what do you think? Better, worse? And once again, I'm trying it center chest, clip to my shirt just to see what it sounds like. And um, yeah, what do you think? Better, worse? So on the whole, I found that position wise, away from the throat and nearer to the center of the chest sounded the best on me. And in terms of the audio, I was really impressed with how sort of complete it sounded straight out of camera. Don't get me wrong, all audio needs some sort of polishing, some sort of EQ and compression. This needed very little, which is always a good sign for me. And wait for this, I tested out the guardrail analog limiter and it's, it's amazing. Check this out. So now I want to see what the guardrail analog limiter sounds like. So I've turned the volume all the way up on the receiver and I turned my camera input volume down just a little bit and I'm just going to get louder and louder and see what it sounds like. It should be kind of clipping and sounding not so good, but what do you think if I get really, really close? Hopefully the guardrail has done something to help. Okay. Here we are. This is somewhere in England. Actually, it's in Bristol. And I'm here with my human male clone. And I'm some distance away from the camera. That's a 35mm lens. And if you're interested, it's, it's actually the A74 in S3. So, yeah, I've got the, the lav mic plugged in at the moment. And just on my lapel bit here and yeah I'm, in, I'm as curious as you to see what this sounds like. I was quite a distance away, I'm not sure exactly how far but yeah shouldn't be any problem by here. I've actually got the, uh, the transmitter in my pocket and I'm not sure if that's going to interfere with the signal but yeah Shouldn't be a problem by now. Hoping it sounds good. I love these things so far. Back to Studio Harv. In terms of user experience, I have no complaints. It's It couldn't really be easier. You switch them both on, set your volume and go. That's it. So how about value for money? Well, I feel like this is the trump card of this product because I would say the value for money is staggering, jaw dropping. When you compare it to the Rode, it, this instantly looks like a lot more for your money because this unit is around £160, I'll put the dollars amount here, and the Rode unit is around 185 But then consider that to truly compare the value of these two products, you have to then add on the cost of a lav mic to the Rode, which, you know, they, they do a bundle which includes the, I believe it's the Lavalier Go, which um, you can you can add it works out significantly more. Anyway, now it's time for the pros and cons, and we'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So here are the pros. It is supreme value, way more for your money than the Rode, and I can't fault this in any way. The sound quality is great. I was really impressed with both the internal mic 
and the lav mic in particular. The lav mic supplied with this kit is actually a really big deal. It's a big saving, plus it sounds really good. I love the LCD display for this unit. Subjectively, I would say it's even better than the Rhodes one. Man, that guardrail is fantastic. I love it. It's such a pro feature and it's just really reassuring when you're using this unit. I would say the case also is excellent. It's just nice when they think about these things. It's a thoughtful product. And onto the cons, and I would say the Deity is a slightly less polished look compared to the road, and that's just purely subjective and means nothing. Also not really a con, but the five hour battery life is not quite as good as the Rhodes seven hours, but it's still really respectable and definitely usable. And again, the 175 foot range is not quite as far as road, but still really respectable. I mean, who needs this kind of range anyway? And that's about it. Finally, for my opinion, and it's like Deity looked at the Rode Wireless Go and said, can we improve this? Can we offer more? Can we make it more thoughtful, all for a lower price? And that's exactly what they've done. That's what this is. And please don't get me wrong, I know there's lots of Rode fans out there and I still think the Rode Wireless Go is a decent product. But as I have no brand loyalty, I know which one I would go for. If you're new to this channel, you may not know that I'm actually originally from an audio background, and I feel like it might be good to give you just a tiny bit of context about Rode as a company. Rode have such huge brand recognition and reach that they've become and have been the brand leader for on-camera mics for quite some time. But you should know that in the recording studio world, Rode are considered a low-budget microphone company that produce good value microphones that no self-respecting studio would want to own. That may sound a little bit harsh and unfair, but and I don't speak for all audio guys, but yeah, generally that is the opinion. I'm a video guy now, but I still consider myself having a little bit of an edge when it comes to the audio side of things. And I just thought it'd be interesting to, to tell you uh, about the perception of Rode elsewhere in the audio world. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you found this really interesting and helpful. That's always the goal of these videos. I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has picked this video for you, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. <laughs>